Thank you, Assad. Uh, and thank you to the coordinators for inviting me to speak. Um, so yes, the, as many of you, the, my last meeting I attended was the, uh, the meeting in March uh, in 2020. Uh, so this is the first in-person meeting. Um, and, and just to let you know what it's like on the East Coast at this time of year, uh, the, the colors are still there, but they're starting to dissipate. So uh, it was a little hard to leave the two-week time period where we have all the colors. Uh, I have no dis disclaimers, but these are a lot of my opinions and maybe not all of NCI's. Um, so I'll talk about our, our portfolio announcements or our portfolio analysis on uh, gastric cancers and early detections. The funding detection, uh, early detections, which we've heard quite a bit about as being important, and then the funding opportunities that might be available. Um, and we have heard this, we've seen this already today, uh, or the portfolio analysis, which you can find in the reporter section on at NIH, um, gastric cancer specific uh, uh, funded awards uh, came out about 18 of them. Uh, which is uh, pretty low, uh, and it's about um, $10, 000, $10 million a year. Uh, so that's it's it's poor. It's it's you know almost embarrassing to put this up, um, and, and we saw a little bit of this. This is the type of grants that are funded. Um, so it's there, there's not a lot uh, there, and, and so and, and as Assad said, it's not just the lack of us putting money there. It's it's the uh, it's the applications coming in. Uh, it's also about educating the reviewers that this is an important area uh, because often in a review study section you will hear, uh, well, just treat them with H. pylori or, or treat the H. pylori and, and we don't have to do any of this. So, so there's an education. It's not just to the surgeons and everything, but it's the reviewers that, that uh, sit on the review panels. They have to learn that this is an important area and that it needs uh, more attention. Um, so funding is over. Uh, and it's, we can go have wine. Uh, <laughs> so, so we'll talk a little about early detection. We know that early detection will save lives. We've heard that already. Um, and so uh, we, we can go down that. So I, I actually work in the Cancer Biomarker Research Group, and so that's our focus is to is for early detection uh, to identify and validate biomarkers uh, that were are designed for earlier detection and, and risk assessments. And we do this by developing uh, consortiums that look at uh, the, to create uh, multi-center sites for uh, looking at that. And one of the needs for a successful biomarker study is to have uh, take a collaborative approach. It doesn't work at an R01 level very well. It, it needs uh, multiple sites of people working together, this, this group of people, uh, um, talking and, and sharing samples and ideas. Uh, so, so that's um, what we do in, in the biomarkers research groups. Um, and sorry, I missed, there's a, there's four, there's actually five marks there, and I hit, hit one. So these are consortia that we've put together through the, uh, the cancer biomarker research groups. These are actual uh, multi-center sites that are designed to study early detection, to, to collect samples, uh, and to develop biomarkers in, in assays for looking for early detections. Um, and, and you can find more about them at the cancer prevention site. Um, so the EDRN has been doing this for over 20 years now, uh, and, and it's got a lot of interesting uh, areas. Uh, have, have not quite brought the gastric cancer applications in, uh, but again, it's the applications have to get there to, to come in. Uh, we have one on pancreatic cancer, uh, a liver cancer uh, consortium that's uh, there's a, actually an RFA out for this one, uh, a liquid biopsy consortium, which I'll show you the RFA on that. And then there's some other trans-NCI consortia that you could see on our website. Uh, biomarker development, it's a pipeline, just like a drug development. You need uh, uh, different, you need discovery, you need to move from the discovery to 
uh, identifying the actual ones that work. You need to uh, evaluate them in, in longitudinal studies and then a clinical evaluation to determine if they're functional in the, in the clinic. And just like a drug study, this costs money. And it's, it's much harder to convince a company to put up money for a biomarker study, uh, although some of our uh, multi-cancer study uh, grails and and other companies are thinking about doing it. Uh, this is a, a, what we tr promote in terms of how a biomarker study needs to be done. It's, it's done in a phase type work where uh, you discover it in a preclinical applications. You move into a clinical arena where you validate your discoveries. Uh, then we need a retrospective longitudinal study to, um, to look at the the, the screen positive type assays, and then, then we move to a prospective study, which is a, basically an asymptomatic patients uh, where we can pick up the false positive reports. So all this is, is time and, and is money. And so um, can we develop biomarkers for gastric cancer? Um, well, we did hear about one this morning uh, uh, that was developed in in Singapore uh, that's, that I'm told is actually, they're using it now. It's, it's not being reimbursed by, um, by the, the medical, by the, the insurance companies, or, but, but it is being used. And what that will give us is um, world information. It'll give us knowledge of how well it works in a uh, actual clinical application what types of false positives are going to come out, what's the consequence of the false positives that come out. So, so we're in the beginning stages, but obviously we need more. Um, so for biomarker discovery, we need screening assays. Um, you, the, the, as we've heard, there is, is no standard of care in the U.S. Uh, and we're in Asia, there is an endoscopy. Uh, so the the when you discover a biomarker, you, you run it against, to show that it's a true biomarker, you need a positive result to look at. And so that's what we need. Uh, and, and so for colon, for colon cancer, the, the Cologuard was discovered by running tests and looking at people as they're going in for colonoscopy. So you get the answer. Uh, you know, shortly after you've, you've looked at it and unblinded it. So, so what we really need is a um, standard of care or it, it's a costly intervention study uh, to, to do uh, endoscopy uh, kind of things. Um, and so this needs uh, uh, the integrated laboratory approach. As I mentioned earlier, we need a large number of biospecimens collected from multiple sites you, we, you know, the discovery is done on tens and twenties, but but the validations are done on done on you know uh, thousands to hundred, ten thousands. So so this we need these large cohorts of people to to move them forward. So funding opportunities that are available. So you can do a, a search in the grantsnih.gov. If you put in gastric cancer, you get nothing. Uh, <laughs> So, um, and, and you know, I, that, I, 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 you know, this is what I was supposed to do: is come up and, and share these with you. And I put this in, and I have nothing to talk about. So again, we can go have wine. Uh, so, uh, but as Assad says, there there are other, there are the normal mechanisms. Uh, that are out there that are open to gastric cancer. They're not specific to gastric cancer studies, but they are open. So we recently put out a NOCI. Uh, a NOCI is a notice of special interest. That means we want people to uh, look at these already published um, uh, uh, funding opportunities for specific reasons. So, so these are not specific to um, to to. Uh, of gastric cancer, but these are biomarker specific type uh, uh, funding opportunities. And, and so I'll go over a few of them uh, as we go here. So um, uh, funding opportunity to design uh, 
Th these are the, the general type ones that are open for almost all the time. They're reoccurring funding opportunities. The, the parent R01s, uh, the, the, uh, the parent NCI type R21 studies and the P01 type studies. So they can be used for almost any type of research. And, uh, and, but, and so there's the links there. Uh, so more interesting is for biomarker studies, is, which I brought up in the NOCES, um, is the ones that incorporate business. Uh, so these, the first two are from um, SBIR. These, these are designed to, at the early stage, is to bring in a, a business partner. In, and so you've got a marker in your hand and you don't know what to do, bring in a business partner, get some funding from SBIR uh, and, and see if we can move it forward. Uh, the last one on there is an RFA. Uh, this is for the, our, our liquid biopsy consortium. This is a uh, pre-competitive collaboration uh, with liquid biopsy. And this, this actually requires you to have a, a corporate or uh, industrial partner. Uh, this RFA just came out. Uh, it's the, the, the current one does not have a gastric cancer uh, partner in it. it it's, it's hard, it's very strong liquid biopsy type studies. Uh, so, so whether it's appropriate, I, you know, this is what we have in liquid biopsies. Uh, validation uh, studies, uh, in this one, uh, we heard some talks earlier about um, having studies ready to go and how do we move them forward. So, so this is, these assays are designed if you have, um, uh, the, uh, you've already def validated your marker in the lab, you've showed clinical utility, now you need to go to a larger study and, and, uh, uh, with samples that, are, that, that can help validate it either in a phase two or phase three study. And, and what our um, NOSI that I talked about at the front end is designed to do is to bring people together that have the samples to, with the people together that have the biomarkers. So, so somebody that has a, 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 a nice marker that detects gastric cancer uh, at the early stage, which we've heard about together this morning, but may not have enough samples, cohort samples to, to run assays, uh, could meet up with people that have samples banked in their freezers. Uh, and th this funding opportunity is to bring them together so that we can uh, make this work in a, a more a successful manner. Uh, this one is about cohorts. Uh, we also heard another one about an RFA for cohorts that was just opened in, in uh, I think that one is up and running, but this one is for, this is a continual cohort, um, a PAR, which means it's, it's issued for multiple times and it, it continues with multiple receipt dates. Uh, the, what's new about this one is the uh, uh, 161 one is for building the next generation of uh, cohorts. This is to, to get together and, and develop cohorts of samples that can be used uh, for the types of biomarker studies we have. Uh, typically the, this, this funding opportunity was always focused on existing cohorts, uh, but now that we have this one for uh, new next generation of so this is a starting point for uh, uh, gastric cancer where we need to put this whole group together to start raising samples and put raising and do it collecting samples the same way uh, and so that when you go and compare your biomarkers uh, they they're comparable because everything was was uniform across the board uh, we have another noci for imaging uh, this one is about putting AI to images uh, and learning, f see if we can learn uh, imaging-based modeling for early detection of, of abdominal cancers. Um, so a little bit tougher for uh, gastric cancer where the imaging is uh, endoscopy, uh, whereas pancreatic cancer we're using uh, CAT scanning. Uh, so we we've actually have a, a few groups that are working in, in the pancreatic cancer, they're actually putting together imaging repositories. Uh, what, what they've done is they've, they, they've discovered people, they went into the health records and find people that have pancreatic cancer, and then they go back in their history and find them that were imaged three to five years ago, had CAT scans, 
and now they're using AI to look at those imaging to predict which ones actually develop the cancer. So this is the type of notice uh, uh, funding opportunities that that might support. Um, uh, we heard health disparities. These are two uh, funding opportunities that are uh, quite frequently new that are focused on health disparities, uh, which is um, they're probably, um, I'm sorry, one is a health disparity, one is also, the other one is a microbiome one. These are more mechanistic studies versus biomarker studies, uh, but, but they're, they're out there. And um, then one, there's another one, uh, an intent to publish. This is coming in the future. Again, not specific to to, colon, to gastric cancer, but it's on the tumor microenvironment, uh, which we heard that that might be a critical place to go, what's going on in, in the stomach in terms of the microenvironment. Uh, finally, uh, most of these are listed on our, uh, the, the DCP, the Division of Cancer Prevention's webpage on the resources. So, so they're, they're up there and they're changing. This is always a good place to go to look for funding opportunities. Uh, or to contact Assad or me uh, so we can help you along. So uh, thank you and 